Hello, my name is Li Min Fu, uh, and I will be talking about the DAO, which I developed in my free time as well. Um, so in this talk, I will first give you, give you some uh, overview about the language and uh, some features, and then I will select some example pages to explain in a little bit more details. Then I will spend more time to talk about the uh, concurrent programming because uh, I think this is the, uh, one of the ma major features of this language. Then I will also uh, speak about the uh, JIT compiler, uh, which is based on LLVM. Then I will also mention a tool I developed based on CLAM, which you can generate bindings from C, C++ library, heard files uh, automatically. Then I will also show a, a screenshot of uh, an IDE which I developed for DAO. And then I will also um, mention some future development uh, plans. So uh, for the motivation of uh, this language, um, Initially, it was motivated by Perl. Uh, I, I had to uh, write some Perl scripts, but I had a lot of frustration with this language, so um, I got very curious about the uh, language design and implementation. So at that moment, uh, one of my questions is uh, how hard it is to develop a, a good language. Then, um, I also wanted to have a good, better programming language for bioinformatics, which was the field I was working on. But eventually the goal had become to, gel, to create a, a general purpose programming language which offers advanced features uh, with a, a small runtime. Um, so this language emphasizes on, emphasis on rich but long redundant uh, data types and features, and, and it also should have consistent and reasonably designed syntax. Uh, so it, uh, I also wanted this language to be very easily extendable and embeddable. So it also uh, offers a simple programming interface. Uh, I also intended this language to, to be usable in numerical computation. So the design and implementation is um, mostly optimized for numerical computation. And also, because the now, uh, multi-core computers are quite popular, so I also try to um, support um, some concurrent programming features in this language. So for a new language, I think most people we have uh, one of the first questions is uh, how this language look like. So this is how this language look like. Uh, in the left, um, the code has low type annotations. So it ha or has implicit, implicit types. In the right side, uh, the code has uh, well annotated types. Uh, so it can, you can see it um, mostly say C++ like. Uh, but with, with some uh, uh, exceptions. And also, you may wonder what kind of performance you can expect from this language. So I, I will show some benchmarks in one of the first slides. So here's some benchmark I did uh, with the programs from the program language uh, benchmark games. So you, you can see that here is the computational time for this, the, those programs in DAO with DAO, and here it's DAO with the JIT companion, and here is the speed up. So here it is the same program, equivalent programs in Lua, Python, and C. So you can see that the DAO is reasonably fast and, uh, uh, in, template, in templated language. But um, it's loaded very fast, so it's um, 
quite slow compared to C. Uh, and for the JIT compiling, the speed up is uh, good for some programs, but for others, uh, it, uh, it simply uh, don't work because um, now it can only compile a subset of uh, merge instructions. So here I will just list some key features of this language. Uh, so first of all, it's optional, ty optional typed with the type influence and the static typing, type checking. And then it has the BMF, BMF-like syntax macro for defining co customized syntax. Uh, it has native support for concurrent programming uh, and LLVM-based JIT compiling. And it also has simple C interfaces for, for embedding and extending. And there are many other features. Uh, I will not read them out, but I, I will say that some of them to explain in the following slides. Uh, there, are some also, there are also some modules and tools I developed for this language. Uh, uh, I, I will briefly mention uh, Clandao. Uh, which is a tool to wrap C++ libraries automatically. And then I will also show DAO Studio uh, ID for DAO. So for optional typing, uh, this, slide, this slide is very simple. It's just uh, some um, typical per place you can write types optionally. So for variable declaration, you can write types or you can just uh, omit it. And also for function parameters, you can specify types, also return the type. And for class def definition, you can also specify types or just omit them. And the type system that supported this option typing is very simple. Um, it's mostly instru instruction that based uh, type influence, so there's not much to say. But I will mention some other features which uh, are enabled by this type system. So the first is the uh, instruction specialization, which is one of the reasons uh, the, the, the program written in this language is fast uh, at, the inter at the interpreted language. Because uh, uh, after type influence, uh, the virtual instructions will be specialized according to the op operand types. So here you plus two integers. After type influence, the add instruction will be specialized to add iii for, for integers. And also it, it does function specialization. So if you write a function without a, a explicit types, when you call this function with the some concrete uh, types, then this function will be specialized at the corner side uh, based on the parameter types. So this function will be specialized to a function for a, an integer parameter. And at, at this line, it will be specialized for to in the function for a string parameter. Um, another useful thing for Optional typing is uh, uh, when, when you write uh, uh, extending code in C, it can save you from writing a lot, a lot of boilerplate code to check parameter types. Because uh, when you wrap a function with this signature, this function we've called, we've called and the, the parameter which is passed to this function will be granted to have a follow the type. So you don't need to do type checking here, and you just use it as a float. So here it's quite different from writing uh, extending code for Lua and uh, Python, because uh, in those languages, you have to write uh, quite some boilerplate code. The next feature I will uh, introduce the uh, DAO syntax macro. DAO syntax macro is mostly based on the Buxom form. So um, 
uh, BNF expression can actually be viewed as a pattern for both matching and generating token sequences. So if you combine two BNF expressions, you can use one to match the source syntax and the other to generate the tokens for the target syntax. So here's the, how the syntax how the syntax look like for syntax macro. So here you define this is the syntax and here you can optionally have a language ID which controls where this syntax can be applied. Uh, so here you express your source syntax pattern and here you express the target, target syntax pattern. So here is an example. In this example, the brackets it is for pattern grouping and the uh, exclamation and the question marks and the uh, those marks are also most uh, are for group, group repeating. And the squared bracket is for optional group, which is equivalent to this. And in this uh, in the syntax pattern you can use some special variables to represent the identifier, expression or a block of code. So here is an example markdown. So in this markdown, you want to support this kind of syntax while to end, which is um, uh, maybe lower like syntax. So this syntax we transform, this markdown we transform this syntax to this one. This is the native syntax of, uh, of DAO. So uh, the, the, the compiler actually uh, will generate a tree for this uh, pattern and generate an, another tree for the target pattern. Uh, when the source code is matched to the, the source pattern, um, the matched tokens will, will be linked to the nodes in the source uh, tree, so, so syntax tree. Uh, then the target syntax tree will be used to generate uh, use token sequences according to some uh, matching rules. So with this syntax, you can write code like this, which is entirely different from the uh, native DAO syntax. Uh, here I will briefly mention the code searching method, which is like uh, code block in Ruby. Uh, I mentioned this because there are some examples using this kind of syntax in the following slides. So basically, you can pass a block of code as uh, an additional parameter to a function. Uh, this code block can be attached to function co function call using this syntax. So here is an example of a built-in code search method. Um, so this method iterates on a list of uh, integers. And uh, the integers, the values and the index will be passed to this code, code block automatically. And you can specify the variable names for, for, for those. You can also define user defined the code search methods. Um, this may be a little bit uh, complicated. Um, I, I don't know if I will have time to explain this or not. I, I will come back if I have time. Uh, DAO also support the function decorators, uh, mixing classes, and uh, aspects. Um, they are all linked together, so I will introduce one of one by one. So decorator is um, are functions are functions that can modify other functions. Uh, so here it's a dec decorator, and uh, it take a function as a parameter. Uh, in this decorator, you will you may call this function with the parameters with with this special variable which uh, represented the parameters will be passed to the function. Uh, here it will, so when you apply a decorator, you, you just put it uh, before the definition of this function. 
Mm, it looks like Python decorated, but it's quite different. Because in Python decorated, you basically you evaluated this function and then return a new function or, or an object to replace the original one. But here, this decorator is uh, just a template. So when you apply this decorator, it will generate a new function based on this template. So it's uh, quite different from Python decorator. Uh, now I will speak a little bit about mixing. So mixing are classes with members, uh, which are injected from other classes without inheritance. So the basic syntax is uh, to place the component class in a pair of bracket. Um, so this, uh, so in this way, mix this class will have uh, addition of members like values and the method uh, this method but this way this component will not be the parent class um, so here I, I will speak about a class decorator which I think um, it's possibly unique in this language so class decorator are classes Put decorate methods will be automatically applied to the methods of mixing class classes. So basically, you can define some uh, uh, methods as decorators, and you can also uh, specify the pattern of the method which this decorator can be applied to. So with this pattern, when you only methods with this pref uh, pref prefix. Uh, will be modified the, by this decorator. So in this mixing class, this method will be decorated by this, this decorator. So with this cla class decorated, here comes the uh, electrical uh, implementation of uh, aspect. So uh, aspect uh, are simply decorated classes, but with additional rules, for auto automatic ap application of uh, the decorated classes. So here is basically a decorated classes uh, with a, a law, which means this decorated class will be applied to all classes with the names prefixed by my. Uh, okay, now I will start to speak about the uh, concurrent programming in DAO. There are multiple features in, uh, in DAO to support the concurrent, concurrent programming. So the simplest is the asynchronous function call. And then there's the asynchronous object. And then there's the uh, task communi communication channel, which, it look like, uh, which look like uh, go channels. But it, 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 it was uh, actually inspired by Go. Uh, then there's the uh, uh, built-in multi-threading modu modular MT. Uh, all these uh, concurrent programming features are uh, um, supported by a concurrent Gauge connection. So here's the, the asynchronous uh, function, function call. So you just append a, a double ex uh, exclamation marks to a function call it will become uh, asynchronous. Asynchronous function calls um, are executed in uh, a sep in separated tasklet, which are uh, lightweighted uh, uh, threads. Um, they return future values, which can be used for scheduling and uh, retrieving results. So here's a simple uh, example. So in th this function, we compute the sum of uh, logarithms of uh, some integers. So you can start as an asynchronous core, core. It will return a future value. Uh, so using this future value, you can check if the compute computation uh, are finished a lot. You just wait, for, wait with, with the timeout. If you time out, you, you can just print 
print out some message. After it is uh, finished, you can obtain the value of this function. Sorry, here I forgot to add the return sum because um, otherwise it will not get the sum. Uh, here it's uh, a synchronous object, uh, and a synchronous object is uh, it's a normal object, but when it's created uh, uh, in a synchronous uh, model, um, all its method will be uh, called uh, and executed uh, uh, synchronously, just like a synchronous function call. And also such tasklets are scheduled such that only one tasklet are active at each time for the same instance. So here's an example. So you have a class for data clustering. Um, you create a, an asynchronous object with this uh, double exc exclamation marks. And then you, you call this method, it, it will return uh, a future value just as um, a singular function call. Here you can do something else and check for the completion of this, uh, of this method. <coughs> now here comes the task communication channels. So channels allow your pass data between tasklets and uh, perform some synchronization between them. Uh, the channel type is uh, implemented uh, at the uh, customized C data type that support template like like type arguments. So here you can create a channel that uh, only allow passing integer types uh, with uh, a capacity capacity of five. So this type is uh, a, bit, a bit look like a C++ template types. It provides um, several methods. The most important two are the method for sending and receiving data. Here are the signatures for the methods. Uh, so here I will show you a simple example. So here is the producer class. It will send uh, some integers through a channel. Uh, after it finish sending the integers, it will set the capacity of the channel to zero, which effectively close uh, this channel. The second class uh, is the consumer, <coughs> consumer channel, uh, consumer class. It will receive the data from the channel uh, and print it out. When the cha channel is closed, it will receive a data with a, uh, with a, a finished status. So here you create this channel and uh, you create the uh, producer, producer and the consumer as a, a synchronous uh, object. Then you, you just simply run the method. It will automatically start the communications and the synchronization between them. Uh, the last feature we mentioned about is the uh, empty modular for multiple threading. It's a built-in modular. Uh, it um, can be used to create the uh, tasklets. Uh, but more importantly, it can uh, it offer parallel code session methods, which can automatically parallel some some computations. Uh, so here is uh, an example for the empty start method, which can be used to create, create a tasklet. So basically, you can put almost any code in in this block which can, will be executed at the tasklet. Uh, here it is the same, you have a future value, you can do the same waiting and uh, uh, getting, retrieving the result. So here is the list of the parallel method. 
So those method will uh, automatically par parallel parallelize the computation over an early list map. So, for example, the first one simply iterate ten times using four thread and print the the index of the iteration out. And the second it will iterate over this list using four thread. And here it will uh, to map um, the list into t new ma new list using four thread. Here it will uh, to modify this list using four thread. You can also search for uh, a particular item in a list. Here you specify the condi condition for the. Um, for the setting, it will return the index of the item which satisfy this uh, condition. Uh, now I will speak a, a little bit about uh, the JIT compiler. Uh, it's uh, implemented at a uh, uh, loadable modular. So you, um, when you run DAO, you simply specify um, command line argument, and this modular will be automatically loaded. Uh, JIT compiler will be, uh, JIT compiling will be uh, enabled. So the back end of this compiler is based on LRVM, uh, and uh, it uh, emphasizes on your local computation. Um, it can only compile a subset of DAO virtual machine instructions. Uh, that's why some programs had uh, low speed up, because the uh, there are a lot of um, sufficient flashing of numerical computation in the program. So here is uh, some benchmarks. It's the same table I show you in one of the first slides. Uh, so you, you can see that for some of the programs, the speed up is uh, reasonably good. But for the last two, because uh, those two programs uh, don't have much new much uh, numerical computation, so that low speed up. How much time? Do I? Oh, okay, I can. Uh, now I will speak about the tool based on clan clan DAO. Uh, it can um, be very easily used to uh, build up bindings to C plus plus libraries. Uh, since it's based on CLAN, it, it can handle a wide range of C++, C++, C++ libraries. So it basically generates patterns derived from herd files. Um, it supports um, C++ functions, uh, C structures, and uh, callbacks, C++ classes, and the inheritance. Uh, it also supports virtual, uh, virtual function and even a little bit of templates. Um, since for some functions, uh, the type in C and C++ uh, are ambiguous. So sometimes you have to specify some hints for the wrapping. Uh, those hints can be expressed as the C macros. So here is an example of the Input file for clan DAO. So you you create a, a C file. Uh, in this C file, you can specify the modular lane uh, using this uh, macros, and you can define hint at at macros. So this hint is to tell the tell clan DAO that the, that this function is a parameter, is an uh, integer pointer. But actually, it, uh, it should be an array of um, uh, size three. So the calendar will automatically generate the code which treat this parameter as an array. Then you include the head files you want to wrap. Then you can just run calendar like a, a C, C++ compiler using similar uh, command line options. 
then it will generate the binding code. So in the current DAO, I have generated bindings for many uh, libraries, like uh, GSL, and also some libraries for binding methods, and uh, some, some libraries for visualization, 2D graphics, 3D graphics, multimedia, uh, graphic user interface, and some other, other stuff. Uh, currently, some of them are not um, updated to the current DAO. So if you try, some of them may fail, but uh, I, I will bring them up to date. Uh, here is um, an, a screenshot for the DAO Studio, which uh, I de developed using Qt4. Uh, so this um, DAO Studio can support uh, code editing, uh, and also uh, it has a console to run the code. Uh, it also have, has a debug. Mm. So uh, it, um, it has some interesting features, like um, it support the syntax highlighting in the console. So when you write code in the console, you, you got a syntax highlight. It can also support um, Vim like uh, edit model, so you can use it like uh, uh, Vim edit. Uh, so here is the some future plans. Um, since um, I spend most of time for for developing the features, so I I didn't spend much time for documentation. So there, there are a lot of improvements for the documentations to, to be done. Um, there are also some possible improvements for the, uh, to the implementations uh, I planned it to. Um, and also, um, uh, you don't need some comprehensive unit tests. Uh, there are also some planned impl improvements to the JIT compiler, uh, client out tool, and uh, DAO Studio. Uh, Okay, that's all. Thank you for your time. Thank you.